Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this review and Tactica here, uh, Psychic Awakening Engine War. Uh, we've already taken a look at Adeptus Mechanicus, Imperial Knights. Check out those previous videos if you want to see the updates for them. Uh, but in this video, we're going to take a look at Chaos Knights. I don't personally have Chaos Knights, uh, but still, we can take a look at the rules uh, for them and, and see how good the update is to see if they've got any gold nuggets and really good updates or not. Admech, uh, some good stuff. Uh, Imperial Knights, there's a, a few bits in there that are pretty good as well. Uh, if you collect uh, Chaos Knights, what do you think of this update? Leave your own comments uh, in the comments section below. So, Dread Lords of Ruination. So, you get a name generator and then you get the Dread Households. So. If your army's battle forged, all Chaos Knights models in your army, other than Dread Blades, as described in Codex Chaos Knights, gain the Dread Household Faction keyword. When you include such unit in your army, you must nominate which household that unit is from. Uh, you then simply replace the Dread Household keyword on that unit's data sheet with the name of your chosen household. If the unit has the Iron Classed Household keyword, it must come from the Iron Classed Household that owes allegiance only to themselves and their own domains. If the unit has the Infernal Household keyword, it must come from a household that owes allegiance to the Dark Mechanicum. Uh, you can use any of the households that you have read about, or you can make up your own. If your army's battle forged, all units in a Chaos Knight Super Heavy Detachment, other than Dread Blade units, must be the same Dread household. All other such models will gain a household bond. The bond gained depends upon the household they're drawn from, as shown in the following pages. For example, uh, such uh, House Lucaris units gain the virtue through strength bond. In order to be given any of the household bonds listed here, the, a model must have the appropriate quest to trade Taurus keyword. Uh, so it says here, House Lucaris, House uh, Herpetrax and House uh, Chy Chimera uh, can only be selected for models with the Iron Class household keyword. And then House Vextrix and the House Comet Commentis may only be uh, selected for models that have the Infernal Household keyword. Following sets of rules apply to each of the houses listed in Codex Chaos Knights. Each contains a household bond, a warlord trait, an artifact of tyranny and stratagem. So interesting way of doing it here, it's all locked in, you get a, a bit of each depending on which one you choose. That's the way they've organised it, a bit different to usual uh, for the Chaos Knights. If I remember right, I did review the uh, Chaos Knights Codex, and that's some pretty powerful stuff there. Uh, pretty impressive. So now there's some extras that can be added uh, on. So, uh, House Herpetrax, then. It's the Household Bond Dauntless. Add two to the wounds characteristic of models with this bond. Add one instead if the model is a War Dog. So, immediately, you're off to a pretty good start there. Plus two wounds. Great. Uh, the Warlord trait 
Uh, if a house uh, Herpetrax character is your warlord, you can give them the following warlord trait instead of one. This is on page 70 of the Codex. Bound to none. The first time this warlord is destroyed, if it does not explode, roll 1d6 at the end of the phase and a 4 plus return this model to play <laughs> with d3 wounds remaining. Yeah, off to a good start here. Placing as close as possible to its previous position, more than an inch away from enemy models. Fantastic. Uh, really, really good here. Extra wounds and a chance to resurrect tonight. And then the artifact here, uh, the Crown of Jadafra. It's, uh, again, House Herb Drex model only. Resolve an attack made by Mellow Open against a model of this relic. Subtract one from the hit roll. So, helping out. And there's also the Wall of Trait, Warping Aura. One command point, use a strategy at the end of the fight phase, select one. Uh, house Herpetrax model from your army. Roll 1d6 for each enemy unit that's within an inch of that model, and a 4 plus the unit suffers a mortal wound for each unit. I'm not sure how helpful that will be. It's really, it's not bad, it's okay. But uh, the actual household bonds, fantastic. The wall of traits, great. Yep. So, not bad at all. A good start here already. Uh, House Lucaris, then. So, the bond is virtue for his strength. For resolve an attack made by a mellow weapon by model, this bond in a turn at that model, in which that model's unit made a charge move, was charged to perform direct intervention, it's plus one to the hit roll. So, not too bad at all. Because every hit really counts for Imperial Knights, so anything to try and make their uh, hitting more reliable. Uh, if the household, and again, um, helps also when you've been taking heavy damage. Just gives you that little boost to make your hits a bit more reliable. Uh, the Warlord trait then is if the House Lucaris character is your Warlord, uh, you give them this uh, trait here. Strike first, strike often. This Warlord always fights first in the fight phase, even if it didn't, even if it didn't charge. If any units have charged or have a similar ability, it's starting with a player whose turn is taking place. So yeah, that can help out as well. Sometimes it's crucial that you fight your strike first before the opponent gets a chance strike you down, especially if you're up against something that's pretty tough. Yeah, okay, and then the artifact is Serpent Strike. House Lucaris model with twin melter guns only. This relic replaces the two twin melter guns and has the following profile. Um, I'm just looking here. Okay, so two twin melter guns only. Replaces the two twin melter guns as the following profile. So it's range 12, assault 4, strength 9, minus 4, d6 damage. And you're on 2d6 and discarding the lowest result. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. I'm trying to see where the bonus is for that. But you're getting plus 1 strength over your regular melter, so it's strength 9. And here it's 2d6, uh, choosing the best, regardless of range. You don't have to get within half range. So that's where it's more helpful. So you can shoot at range 12 and still it's 2d6 choosing the best. So yes, yeah, not too bad at all. Not really the main kind of weapon though that you'd have in your army, but that's, it gives it some kind of upgrade. Uh, trample them is the stratagem. One command point, use a stratagem after a House Lucaris unit has moved across any enemy units. Select one enemy unit that you've moved over and roll a d6. On a 1, nothing happens. 2 to 5, it's d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, it's d6 mortal wounds. Eh, not bad. Did you, that's good fun. We'd use that a few times. Just crush stuff as you walk over it. Yeah, great. You can even do that as you leave combat, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I like that stress. Good fun. Next is House Chimera. Perhaps pronouncing that wrong. As the bond is Rampant Cruelty. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon excluding Titanic Feet. Uh, it's reroll wound rolls of one. It's okay. Household trait, uh, it's a character as your warlord. You can give them the following warlord trait. Uh, maddened Cries. The morale test is taken from any unit within 12 of this model. Ro roll an additional d6 and discard the lowest result. If both results are the same, select one of them to discard. Okay, so morale's not too big a thing in 8th edition. That might change your ninth, but... Okay, and an artifact of tyranny, uh, annihilation. Annihilatum. Uh, it's a model of this with a conflagration cannon only. The model this replaces the conflagration cannon and gives you range 18. I think that stays the same. Assault 3d6. 
yeah, it's better. It's assault 3d6, strength 7, AP minus 2, straight 3 damage. And uh, it's auto hits. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, Fury, pretty good on Overwatch, fantastic. And at damage 3, you can take out vehicles pretty good uh, with that. Uh, two command points this one Fury of Suter's Wake. Use your stress from your shooting phase, select uh, one house Chimera, Chimera model from your army. Roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 3. Or 4 plus, it's d3 multi wounds. You've got to have loads of units nearby to make it worth the two command points, but that is an option. Uh, house Vextrix next. The bond is Titan Kin. When a unit with this bond is chosen to shoot or fight with, or fires overwatch, you can reroll a single hit roll, wound roll made for that unit. Um, similar to one of the traits that the Imperial Knights get. Uh, the Warlord trait is Favour of the Dark Mechanicum. At the start of your movement phase, this Warlord regains a lost wound. Okay, uh, not too bad. And then Heretic Power Core. This is the artifact. artifact um, House effect tricks, model only. Add one inch to the move characteristic of a model of this relic. In addition, add one to damage characteristic of the Reaper Chainsword, a Thunder Strike Gauntlet with a model of this relic. And when a model of this relic is destroyed, add one to any dice roll to see if it explodes. So that's okay. Add interception array, two command points. Use the strategy from the start of your shooting phase. Select one house effect tricks, model from your army. At the end of that phase, resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by this model. Ignore hit roll modifiers. And ballistic skill modifiers. Okay, so if you're damaged, you ignore that. And if your opponent's got some kind of minuses going on, you ignore that as well. And so at the right point, at the right time, that would be very helpful. It costs two command points, but may well be worth it. You know, you've got some Eldar units dancing about all over the place, minus two to hit them. You've got some busted Imperial Knight that's got a couple of wounds left. You play that and then unleash. Uh, full ballistic skill, no minuses to hit, and that's, that could actually be pretty useful. Uh, House Commentus next. The bond is Profane Symbiosis. Whilst the model of this bond has lost half or more of its wounds, add one to attacks. Again, this is similar to what the Imperial Knights get in one of their options. Add one to its attacks characteristic. Resolve an attack made by a mellow weapon by that model. Add one to the hit roll. In addition, when a model of this bond would lose the wound in the psychic phase, it's five plus to ignore the wound. So, it's a stackable bonus is there. Pretty good. Not bad at all. Dread Hunter is the warlord trait. Once per game at the start of the shooting phase, you can declare this warlord will make a killing strike. If you do, select one ranged weapon this warlord is equipped with. At the end of that turn, add one to damage characteristic of that weapon. And resolve an attack made by that weapon, you can reroll hit rolls and wound rolls. Wow. That's excellent. Give that to the right weapon. That's fantastic. Killing strike. Yeah, that's a really good one. Gold nugget, I think, there. Yeah. Plus one damage. Reroll your hits, reroll your wounds. Yeah, brilliant. Really, really good. Okay. As then the artifact here is Demonic Shrike. House Commentus model only. At the start of the shooting phase, select one enemy unit of an 18 of model of this relic. To the end of that turn, resolve an attack made by model of this relic. Improve the arm penetration, penetration characteristic of that weapon by one. So that's okay. Uh, and then one command point encircling hounds. Use the stratagem during deployment. Select a unit. Select one House Commentus war dogs unit from your army. You can set this unit up encircling the foe instead of setting it up on the battlefield. If you do, at the end of one of your movement phases, you can set up this unit anywhere on the battlefield that is within six inches of a battlefield edge and more than nine inches from enemy models. The War Dog's vehicle squadron ability only takes effect when this unit is set up, uh, not when it is set up encircling the foe. You can only use a strategy once per battle. Yet. So you arrive together and then after that, you can split up. Okay. Interesting. Uh, then next here is Dread Household Bonds. So it's similar to Imperial Knights. Um, you are customising your own household for these. Uh, some of them count as, usually it's twos, you can do combos of two. Some of them count as twos, you just get the one, but it's meant to be more potent here. Similar to what we looked at for the Imperial Knights. They had some pretty good combinations going on. Um, you know, some not that great, some were pretty good, and then when you combine two, they're actually 
a uh, nice lot of benefits. We'll see if that's the same here and see if there's any that's similar uh, for the Imperial, uh, for the Chaos Knights here. So, I mean, it's good that Chaos Knights get their own stuff now, their own book, their own bonuses, as opposed to just doing conversion work and then just running, you know, using Imperial Knights rules. The Games Workshop have sorted them out with some uh, unique stuff, which is great. So, Endless Torment, this first one here does count as two. When a model with this bond fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, you can reroll a single dice and determine the number of attacks that model makes when attacking with a weapon that has a random number of attacks. So, it's okay. I mean, if you do that across the board for all your units, you know, maybe there's a lot of units in your army that have got a D6 number of attacks, uh, then it starts to pay off, I guess. It's not bad. Uh, so right, pinpoint cruelty. When a model of this bond fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, you can reroll singles uh, dice from determined damage as a result of those attacks. That's a single one. That's all right. I think a lot of these are. Yeah, I think some of these are going to be the same as the Imperial Knights here. Infamous heredity. When a model of this bond fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight with, you can reroll a single hit roll made for that unit. That's all right. Uh, the Geasts of Ruin. This is counts as two. Resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon against a model of this bond by a model that is more than 24 inches away. It's treated as having the benefit of cover. This is the same as Imperial Knights. This is identical. Slayer of Kings. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon excluding titanic feet by a model with this bond against a vehicle monster. It's plus one to the hit roll. I think maybe... Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe a lot of these are going to be similar to the Imperial Knights here. Uh, Dark Forging, add 6 to maximum range characteristic of a ranged weapon with a model this bond is equipped with. That's an unmodified range characteristic of 24 or more. So you get plus 6 inches to those kind of weapons and plus 2 inches to the maximum range characteristic of all other weapons. So like Melters for example. Again same as Imperial Knights. Warp Vision, this counts as 2. Resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by a model in this bond. The target does not receive the benefit of cover. Same as Imperial Knights. Pride Field Fury, uh, resolve an Whilst a model of this bond has lost half or more of its wounds, increase its attacks characteristic by one. Resolve an attack made by a melee weapon by a model with this bond has lost half or more of its wounds, add one to the hit roll. Again, same as Imperial Knights. I'll run through all of these because uh, not everyone's going to have watched the Imperial Knights uh, review here for Psychic Awakening. So we'll just run through all of these here. Abominable Constitution. Incre <laughs> increase. Increase the move characteristic of a model with this bond by one and always use the top row of its damage table when uh, determining its move characteristic regardless of how many wounds it has left. That's the same. And I think I was saying... Hit roll. Yeah, that was one of the ones I thought was good uh, for Imperial Knights. Yeah, plus one to your move, top down, uh, bracket for movement, and uh, I think that's great. Uh, Harrying packs a war dog model from your, uh, with this bond, can either shoot or charge and turn in which it fell back if it shoots, when resolve an attack made by the model, uh, it's minus one to the hit roll. Uh, frenzied attackers, when resolve an attack made by a mellow weapon, excluding titanic feet by model with this bond, unmodified hit roll for six, scores an additional hit. Uh, yeah, it could help be helpful enough. If, if your army's really geared for close combat, six is popping extra hits. Is very good. It's not extra attacks, it's extra hits. You're going to get the extra hits coming through. Hate driven charge. Uh, if a model of this bond makes a charge move, is charged or performs heroic intervention. The arm penetration characteristic of melee weapons that model was equipped with is improved by one. Enlightened idolaters. This is counts as two. Resolve an attack made by weapon that has an arm penetration characteristic of minus one. Against the model of this bond, that weapon is treated as having an AP minus zero. I don't think it's worth two, but they've put that in there and again same as Imperial Knights Hellforge Construction add one to the wounds characteristic of a war dog model of this bond add two to the wounds characteristic of all other models useful enough uh, Vengeful Outcast again that counts as two Vengeful Outcast counts as two resolve an attack made by model of this bond against an Imperium unit can be roll, wound roll one and that counts as two okay and the Heretical System Bond resolve an attack made by model of this bond is subject to any negative hit roll modifiers, add one to the hit roll. That's alright, and again that counts as two for that one. Loathing for the masses. 
Uh, whilst a model of this bond is of an inch and a unit that contains 11 or more models, increases its attack's characteristic by one. Uh, bold tyrants resolve an attack made by a ranged weapon by a model of this bond against unit VIN 12. Improve the arm penetration characteristic of that weapon by one for that attack. Rapid offence models of this bond do not suffer the penalties to the hit rolls for advancing and shooting assault weapons. Yeah, if your arm is themed that way, great. And then unhallowed. Inscriptions when a model of this bond would lose a wound in the psychic phase. It's a five plus, feel no pain. And that is the review. Next is Chaos Demons. Uh, next, with their update. So, yeah, it's not bad here for uh, Chaos Knights. Some pretty good ones. Uh, the household bonuses here are pretty good. Some good combinations to go for. If you if you are an experienced Chaos Knights player, or you know you, you've seen this update here, leave your own comments and suggestions. I wouldn't say it's the best by quite a way, actually. Uh, there's been other factions have fared a lot better, but at least in uh, Chaos Knights and Imperial Knights, I've, I've got something now, and uh, it's some pretty good stuff in there. And I'm sure there'll be some pretty good combinations you can go for uh, experimenting with those. Uh, uh, household bonds that they can go for. But that's the review. Check out the previous one on Imperial Knights, Deptus Mechanicus as well. Give you a look out for more reviews on the channel. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.